Hi, and welcome back to... Uh, not welcome back, this is completely different. Today I'm gonna be doing a iceberg of the dumbest slash most dangerous challenges that has ever been on TikTok. If you do not know what an iceberg is, an iceberg is uh, the very peak of the iceberg. It's like, oh yeah, this is nice and this is okay. And then throughout this video, it gets uh, even dumber slash uh, more dangerous. And normally my videos is, are, well, definitely I would say, uh, quite humorous but obviously this time because sometimes uh, people actually end up dying I'm not gonna be making jokes during those sections but if it's just a fun challenge I'm just here to hang out okay I think that's all you kind of need to know so yeah without further ado uh, let's just jump right into the fucking stupid ass challenges we start very peaceful well peacefulish and then we just uh, continue moving downwards. Downwards the spiral. Here we go again. Woohoo! The first challenge is called the Devious Lick Challenge. The Devious Lick is an American challenge. It can also be uh, put in here in Europe, but it's mainly in America. And what the challenge was, was basically a bunch of teenagers going to school. And then usually they would go in and do vandalism on the uh, high school slash middle school bathroom not too bad but it did end up with a few people getting arrested and there's also been accounts of people calling it a devious slick going in and uh, like calling in and saying there's a bomb which is not too bad but still pretty stupid and don't do that and especially in america when a lot of the stuff uh, already is missing funds it seems kind of counterintuitive to like destroy the school even more but yeah bright eye challenge bright eye challenge was a challenge that gave you the idea that you will be able to change the color of your eyes to a lighter color. Now, how would you do that, you might ask yourself? Well, it's actually quite simple. You get a Ziploc bag, and in that Ziploc bag, you put in jelly, hand sanitizer, bleach, and shaving cream. After you put that in your little Ziploc bag, you give it a good old shake, and then you put it up to your eye and uh, that will make you have a lighter color eye. Obviously, that does not work, and uh, people just do some movie magic, and then they would have a lighter color eye. Like, they would go like this, and then they would be, like, yesified or some shit like that. Which, again, no real reports of anything doing that bad, but general thought is, like, maybe not a good idea to put bleach super close to your eye. And TikTok is predominantly children also, so. Throw it in the air challenge. Yeah, you never guess it. You, you'd never guess it, even though I, I know I have to say it, but you probably never guess what it is. Three to six people would stand in a little circle, and then uh, they would be looking down like this at the phone that was like filming upwards. And then they would throw something up in the air, and then they have to continue looking down the camera, and then it'll probably hit someone in the head. Which is in itself not too bad, but people have evolved it, and I think the last one I saw was people throwing up letters and shit like that, which obviously is quite dangerous. Like, I might be a little bit biased. I do fucking love, like, a good old stupid video. So, uh, it gets a whatever score from my part. Pink Sauce. Do I even really have to say anything here? Pink Sauce was a woman that made her own pink sauce. I'm not gonna go too deep into this because there's many, many videos out there that are already explaining what pink sauce is. So I'll just do this very quickly. A woman started making her own business, making this sauce that is pink, which is very appetizing. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Obviously, it's a sauce, so it had dairy in it. She would post it out of her own kitchen. And then when people got the sauce, it would be rotten. So, yeah. But now it's actually getting sold in uh, multiple stores uh, worldwide. Well, not worldwide, America-wide, I guess. Uh, so I guess she made it. Good for her. And that's actually all of Tier 1. Pretty nice and easy. Tier 2. DIY Vampire Fangs. Have you ever thought you wanted to look like a cool vampire and have that really cool Astorian-esque vibe to you? Well, not to worry. Those stupid-ass little party city fangs you can get, they don't last long enough. So what people do is that they would put a uh, gorilla glue and then stick it in their mouth with their permanent teeth. I don't know what else to tell you. Don't put glue on your teeth. Sounds pretty normal. So there's been many cases where people would do that and then they would obviously the tooth would get stuck because it's literally called gorilla glue and it's supposed to stay there forever, right? So uh, it would get stuck and then people would be able to get uh, like remove it and therefore that goes to the hospital. And probably also lose some teeth. Great job. Frozen honey challenge. Frozen honey challenge is also pretty self-explanatory. 
it is where you take a bunch of honey and put it in a plastic bottle and then you freeze it and because of the substance it doesn't really get frozen like a normal like you know there's two types of frozen there's like the normal frozen where it's just like ice cold and then there's like pepsi in your freezer and then it explodes everywhere there's liquid gas solid plasma and i guess frozen honey which is like kind of jelly like and uh, people take a big old bite out of it which is um, again not too bad but uh, not very healthy because honey is basically just sugar spicy food challenge spicy food challenge is always something that i've had a lot of love for mainly because that i love seeing people that can't handle spicy food eating a lot of spicy food because uh, the big problem is that a lot of people out there think they can handle way more spicier food than they actually can i couldn't handle spicy food until i got a girlfriend from country where they eat a lot of spicy food and then I kind of had to adapt, I had to evolve, I had to be better and therefore I can have a little pretty spicy food now but if I would have done this shit like six years ago when I hadn't met my beautiful girlfriend I would also uh, be having a real hard time I will say though I fucking, even though that is super dumb and you should not be eating food that you can't like tolerate I do have a love for that one fucking video with those two women influencers. It, they have like small crop tops on and the one is blonde and one is brunette. And then they're eating, I think it's a Carolina Reaper or a ghost pepper or something like that. And that shit is so fucking funny because they take one bite and they're all like, ooh, this is going to be so fun. Ooh, I'm excited. And then it just hard cuts into them having like full blown panic attacks and going to the hospital. So uh, very funny for me. But uh, if you can't handle it, then you probably shouldn't do it. Corn drill challenge. Have you ever seen those cartoons where they eat corn like fucking drrrr? Yeah, that's that's it. People would put a drill inside a corn and then they would try to eat it. And obviously, high power tools shouldn't be close to your mouth and going at extremely fast speeds, you can lose a tooth. And multiple people did lose teeth. Uh, yeah, but Jason Derulo did it, so that's cool. The back crack challenge. To do the back crack slash the backpack challenge, you need to kneel down with your hands over your head. Then the other person needs to go behind you and put their hands inside of, like not inside, but like inside the holes that you made with your hands. And then they'll pick you up and that will uh, make your back crack all the way through. I used to do this uh, all the time when I was younger because it was really funny and I love cracking everything. I really do enjoy that. Not too bad. But uh, chiropractors say that it's actually pretty dangerous because blah, blah, blah. Even with their fake fucking education that doesn't do anything. Uh, chiropractors feel like they have a say in this whole debacle. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, then ask a physiotherapist. Do not ask a chiropractor because a lot of chiropractors are literally just scams. Side tangent. Uh, kick the door challenge. You guessed it. You kick a door real hard. That's it. You know that old game you played as a child where you would like knock on the door and then fucking go run and then peek around a little corner and see if they uh, they open the door and then there's no one there oh yeah but kick the doors that but just uh harder and can damage property because adults also did it this silly little boy prank they also did the kick the door challenge and uh you never guessed it they uh, broke the paper thin door that they have in america pee your pants challenge this shit is the funniest fucking shit i've heard in my entire life pee your pants pants challenge is made by a comedian where it's literally just a dude standing like I'll, I'll show you it's a dude standing like this and then he pisses his pants and then he just wrote piss your pants uh, challenge people didn't realize that it was a joke the whole meme was like oh it's actually impossible for you to pee your own pants as an adult which it obviously is not you just need to kind of let the streams go through you not that i have any experience in it or anything like that but i'm pretty sure it would be possible kind of like a lot of men have a problem with like going to the stall uh, like the urinals because they're like oh what if the other guys uh, and then they get like anxiety and like then they can't pee you just need to get over that barrier and then you can pee your pants but even the guy that made it was fucking baffled that other people did this challenge because it's not a challenge it's just a stupid skit and then people started doing it pretty funny good prank Face wax challenge. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. It is putting a big ass layer of hot wax on your entire face, ears, nose, inside the nose, inside the mouth, maybe even, and everything, right? Just covering yourself up in hot wax and then peeling everything off. Waxing is not bad in itself, but when you do it with that amount of wax and also put it inside your, your nose and your ears, it can damage like nerve endings and it can damage blood vessels and stuff like that it's not anything you'll die off but just uh, it'll hurt a lot kind of like just waxing in itself and then try to wax on the most sensitive area in your entire body 
maybe the second most sensitive area in your entire body. Actually, I think the third. I think the the most sensitive is the hands. Never mind. But uh, yeah, try to do that. Teeth shaving cream. Teeth shaving is a. How do I even fucking say them? What? Okay, teeth shaving is God. Okay, now we're getting into it. Teeth shaving challenge is basically grinding down your teeth so you have those uh, like you take your teeth right and then you grind them down so you have those small little picks like the small little weird looking teeth that you have before you get veneers we don't ha really do veneers here where i'm from but in america i know it's pretty popular so people would uh, do the uh, shaving of the teeth so they wouldn't have to pay for getting your teeth shaven before getting veneers probably don't do anything like that with your own body when you're not trained in them but i don't know maybe it's fucking i don't know maybe it's easier and more cheap orbeez challenge orbeez is a type of like fun kit gun not a fun kit with gun but a, a, it's like a nerf gun but it shoots these like small balls and the challenge was to drive around in your neighborhood and then uh, like shoot at random people with this gun and it obviously it doesn't hurt but as a european you probably would be able to do it and get away with it you'll probably get a reprimand from the police but you'll probably be able to do it and be a-okay not in america and in america it actually went so far that an 18 year old guy went out and he did it and he started shooting at people with this toy gun and he unfortunately uh, was in a state where danger ground was active and therefore they thought that they were getting shot at and therefore they responded with uh, shooting live ammunition at him. And he unfortunately lost his life. Uh, and therefore Orbeez guns has actually also been banned in uh, New York state. Gorilla Glue Challenge. Gorilla Glue Challenge became popular when a TikToker used Gorilla Glue instead of uh, normal hair wax for her entire head and she had to go to the ER. But she, it looked really nice and the way it was like really tucked nicely back and everything. And it resulted in like a sort of like hair helmet type thing. But obviously, since we talked about glue before here, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, oh yeah, this is the big glue fucking channel. Therefore, she obviously couldn't remove it and had to go to the ER and get it removed. She's okay, though. Though, Len Martin, a mythbuster, he decided that this can definitely not be that difficult to remove. So he tried to glue a red solo cup to his lips to disprove that it's not that difficult to uh, remove because he wanted to prove that he could like just lick off the glue and it literally can't be that bad. You never guess what happened. You couldn't do that. And the glue won again, obviously, and he also had to go to the ER. So if I had a nickel for every time that this has happened, that people have put Gorilla Glue in their face to prove that it's really not that bad, I would have two nickels, which is not that much, but it's weird that it happened twice. Best of all, beer challenge super weird kind of weird stuff that it's actually even a challenge but it's basically you have a basketball and then you put a beer can on it and then you drop the basketball and then because of friction i think physics because of something physics it goes down and then the the energy goes back up into the beer can and it'll jump up and then you're supposed to catch it and do a shotgun the only problem is that a ball is round and the can is round ish cylinder ish and it's difficult to kind of map out where it's going to go up. So sometimes people would drop it and then it would go up and then it would catch it. Or sometimes it would just hit them in the face or other times it would hit them in the nuts and um, hurt a lot. So again, not that bad, but uh, not that good either. It's, it's not cool enough. It's one of those things where it's not cool enough to be an actual challenge, but it's also not crazy enough that it shouldn't be there right it's like why why even do it jack has always had this thing where they're like it needs to be funny and cool enough and dangerous enough but there is like it, it if it's just dangerous it's not good enough it has to be cool and dangerous or cool and funny or fu funny and cool it can't just be one of them this one is just kind of like dangerous ish whatever jeffrey dahmer challenge after the show aired it became really kind of i don't want to say sexy but it got kind of like cool to like recreate like I'm a twisted fucking psychopath and all that stuff. So what basically people did was that they wanted to prove that they Jeffrey Dahmer, if you didn't know, was a serial killer back in the 90s, I think. And he took a lot of pictures of his victims. And the challenge was basically film your reaction while looking at these pictures. These pictures are obviously extremely grim and you should not look at it uh, just out of respect and also just it's not that fun to look at. But a lot of people are very easy persuadable and therefore they looked at it and 
Now we have the Jeffrey Dahmer challenge. It kind of reminds me a bit of the Pain Olympics. Dipping challenge. <laughs> Dipping challenge, uh, I had a friend that did this. The meme is that apparently you have taste buds in your nuts. And if you dip your crown jewels, your boys, into soya sauce, you'd be able to taste the soya sauce or at least the salt into like as your taste buds. Just kind of weird. I had a friend that did it. He said he could taste it. I didn't do it because I didn't want to dip my balls in soya sauce. That just sounds kind of annoying. It just feels like th this is just mildly annoying and slimy. I don't know. Not that bad. Just kind of stupid. Pretty good fucking meme though. Rubbing under tongue challenge. I think this is on this tube just because it's kind of like the innuendos of it. A rub under your tongue challenge is that this part under your tongue, it supposedly f has the same texture and the same skin as the glands of a, of a phallus. And uh, I guess that the homophobic people did not like this. So yeah, whatever. Period blood face mask challenge. Pretty self-explanatory. You get your period and then you take that and then you put it on your face because apparently it has a lot of vitamins in it and it's really good for your skin. I don't know if it is. I'm not that big of a skincare. I'm sorry you won't get my skincare routine. But uh, yeah, people did that. I think people have actually done that for quite a while because I also heard in my country that people have done it even before TikTok made a challenge out of it. And there's also even people that eat their placentas after they made like did birth and shit like that. So I don't think it's like that crazy. I think a lot of people have done it. But again, I don't know. I'm just a fucking dude. You know, I'm literally just a guy. Teeth whitening challenge. Using baking soda to whiten your teeth. Even though it's not that harmful, it can corrode your teeth. That's it. Dancing on graves challenge. Young people would go out and film themselves in graveyards and dancing on random people's graves to show how cool and emo they were and or are and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, real piece of shit behavior. Cool. DIY lip filler challenge. Uh, you also called the Kylie Jenner challenge. You take a cup, a little shot glass, and then you suck on it. <laughs> And then afterwards, you have big ass lips. Again, not that bad, but just kind of stupid. And it can hurt a lot, apparently. And it can even uh, lead to nerve damage. If you want to be, like, boring or something like that. How far can you dig challenge? Bunch of boys out on the beach. Have a good time. Let's go digging. The only bad thing that has happened out of this challenge was that someone did it in Arizona, I think. Yeah, in Arizona. And uh, a person... The, the people did not fill the hole back up again. And therefore, the person, uh, no, another person uh, didn't see the big ass hole in the ground and fell down in it. And uh, he definitely hurt himself. So, uh, not that bad. Just fill up your holes, boys. Remember to do that next time you do a fucking Facebook event and go out and dig holes in the beach. Uh, the poop challenge. You go to a stall and then you say that there isn't any more. You go to a stall where another person is sitting and you sit down in your stall and the other person is in another stall. And then you say, oh, sorry, man, I don't have any more toilet paper in here. Can you please give me some toilet paper? And then when the person gives you toilet paper, you put some Nutella on his hand. So he thinks that you put poop on his hand. Silly prank. I'll probably get real fucking mad if that happened to me, though. The Lucknow challenge is one of those challenges where I think it's literally just an online lie. Because uh, the challenge is literally go into a car and then remove the lug nuts from the wheel. And then when they drive, the wheel will fall off, right? Which is obviously incredibly fucking dangerous and fucking psycho behavior if you actually did that. So therefore, I'm taking this with an extremely uh, big grain of salt. Because I don't think anyone has actually done that. But people have faked that they have done it. And then, oh my god, it was so crazy. It was so scary out driving, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone has actually done it. Tier 3. The salt challenge. Pour salt directly into your mouth and see how much salt you can eat. A lot of people don't know this, but salt poisoning and water poisoning is like not even that much salt you need to eat before you can like, it can literally be fatal. Both with water also, I think water is like five liters of water you need to consume in like one sitting and where you'll get water poisoning and it'll be fatal. Luckily, I haven't heard of anything or in my research, I didn't see anything be fatal, but you can get salt sickness from it. Uh, so yeah, just kind of stupid, but um, could be fatal, potentially. Cereal challenge. Uh, a person opens their mouth wide, then another person pours milk into it and then puts cereal into it and then they eat out of that. Seems like weird fetish content, to be honest. I remember that one vine that was like real long ago where a person did that and she started laughing and the milk and the cereal went everywhere. But again, not too bad, but it seems like kind of weird, like fetish-y-ish almost. Scalp popping. So in your scalp is not obviously directly connected to 
there's like fat layers under your scalp. And if you pinch your scalp in the right way, then you'll get a little sound out of it, which is in itself not that bad. But the big problem is that there's a lot of really important blood vessels uh, down here and you can damage that and could damage your nerve endings also. This is where it's down here. There's been multiple cases where people have even like popped a fucking blood vessel up here, you know, in where in and slash around your most uh, important organ set the organ itself so therefore it's all the way down here the morning pill challenge a rumor went around saying that in the, the pregnancy test if you open up the the stuff there's an emergency uh, plan b pill in there and people would do a challenge where they took that afterwards having intercourse so they would make sure that they won't get a child a uh, big problem is that it's not that it is Poisonous. It is not a plan B pill. It is something to soak up the urine when you're peeing on the thing and then it will check if you're pregnant or not. Like a urinal tab, basically. You're eating and it's poisonous. Not fatally though, unless you eat like 15 of them or something like that. Even the company that made pregnancy tests uh, went out of their way to make a statement saying that uh, we do not make plan B pills. In fact, uh, we don't do that at all. The condom challenge is kind of difficult because there's technically two there's the first one where you put a condom up your nose and then you have to uh, take it out of your throat which is just like a silly goofy party trick and the other one is where you fill a condom with uh, water and then you drop it on someone's head which is normally okay but the problem is that condoms have to like this suction thing in it so there has been multiple people almost drowning by getting the water on their head and then it kind of like sits around them and then they pop it on the outside and then the rest of it just sticks in here and then they have to make an opening in their mouth to actually get air so they could get asphyxiated dry scooping kind of like the cinnamon challenge but it's just dry scooping uh, protein powder not that bad but it's just powder so it can get in your lungs and it can be kind of difficult to breathe afterwards the kia challenge the kia challenge is so fucking funny to me because the kia challenge is literally just let's break into Kias and then have other people fill themselves breaking and stealing Kias like the car Kia and that shit is so fucking funny that a random dude one day was like man I fucking love stealing Kias I'ma film myself stealing a Kia and then other people are like yeah I love stealing Kias Kias bro that's so fucking funny obviously illegal don't do that i don't condone it but i do think it's pretty funny even though you shouldn't steal kias it was actually because there was a fault in a lot of the kias which actually led to a big ass lawsuit where kia had to do a huge settlement i think it was 200 million and uh, they had to remake and fix up their security measures on their cars so something good actually uh, went out of all of this from a bunch of dudes stealing kias cha-cha slide you're driving and then you put the like Oh, no, I'm not a car guy. You do so the car continues to drive. And then you go on the other side, and then you film yourself dancing next to the car. We don't have automated cars yet, so it can be kind of dangerous. But, uh, I mean, if you're doing it in a parked road, in a, like a parking lot, and there's no, no one else around, then fuck do I care. And there's also been uh, several near crashes and multiple crashes also. So, real good. The dragon breaths challenge is eating a candy that is very popular in Malaysia and in the Philippines where it's candy that is dipped in liquid nitrogen and when you put it in your mouth then it dissolves and becomes gas and then you get this like big like vape effect like every time you breathe out. Unfortunately uh, liquid nitrogen is not meant to be eaten and it has caused many children to have uh, had to go to the ER and uh, be hospitalized because of it. Fortunately, no one has died from it, but uh, still poisonous and dangerous, even though it looks cool for an Instagram picture. The nutmeg challenge. When you talk about drugs, there's usually two. There's a stimuli and there is a, well, there's an upper and there's a downer. Then there's stimuli and then there is hallucinogenics. But there's also a fifth one. And the fifth one is called paranoia. And paranoids 
They are very, very few and far between, and nutmeg is one of them. The whole challenge consists of eating enough nutmeg so you get high off it. But the problem is that the high you get off it is getting extremely fucking paranoid for multiple, multiple hours. That's it. That's a lot of where, like, kind of like Benadryl. If you take a b- bunch of Benadryl, then you get, like, meet the head man. Nutmeg is the exact same thing. I don't condone the uses of drugs. If you are going to do drugs, I can't stop you, and then at least do something that's fun. And don't do paranoids because that's fucking crazy. So you get like anxiety, sweating, bad hallucinations, see your mom explode in a million pieces, stuff like that. Verbal abuse challenge. Fucking crazy. It's literally just parents filming themselves screaming at their children. That's it. I don't see how that's a challenge. It just seems fucking crazy to me. But it's to show them how they're disciplining uh, their child. Sometimes it's also people saying like doing jokes and then their parents are like clapping back in them in the like making a stitch video which is kind of funny so that could for example be this one which is motherfucker dented my car and said i was an accident and then the dad responded with motherfucker you were an accident which is kind of funny i like it but not the first part the fish tank challenge in fish tanks there is something called methylene blue and that is antifungal it uh, has a very cool color also And uh, people uh, started saying that this has a bunch of other health benefits if you actually drink it. I will tell you right now, even though I'm not a doctor, it's basically the same as drinking bleach. And you should not do that. So uh, yeah, just uh, people on the internet telling you to drink poison. Again, it's there's a lot of these ones that are just people telling you to drink poison. Good job. Thank you. Slap a teacher challenge. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. It's people slapping the shit out of that teacher and then filming it. And I know in America the schools are already fucking rough, right? But that is so fucking insane making a challenge out of literally like beating your teacher. The amount of disrespect that goes on in there is actually fucking insane. And I know children can go fucking rowdy and crazy, but that even to me is like fucking bruh. But I will say uh, that has still not been any proof delivered that this has actually ever happened. The fire challenge consists of you putting aerosol on your body and then lighting on fire. Problem is just aerosol sticks to your body really, really well. And the stuntmen have used that stuff before, but they usually don't use that now because it's really difficult to get off. So it just ended up being a lot of people uh, getting severe burns. The silhouette challenge. Women would be, well, also men would be like dancing sex in front of a camera and then the light would switch up and there would be red light and then they would be naked and then you'd just be able to see their sexy, beautiful silhouette. But the thing is that it was a filter. With a little movie magic, you would be able to see their entire nude body because people were actually fucking nude in their silhouette for some reason. Just stupid because it's online and you shouldn't do that if you're not willing to be nude online. If you catch my drift. People found a way to reverse it so people would be able to see their entire cooter and all that jazz. The fractal burning challenge. I'm not sure you can really call that a challenge, but the whole idea is that you put a piece of wood into your microwave and then science stuff happens and then you can see these cool lightnings that go through the wood, which is very cool. The problem is uh, wood is uh, highly flammable. I'm not sure if you knew that, but wood is highly flammable. And there's been multiple reports of people having their microwave literally blow up because it became too hot. And the final results, if it actually works well, it looks like kind of lightning has gone through the wood, which can look kind of cool. But it is very dangerous because... uh, There has been a case of a 44-year-old woman and a 52-year-old man which has uh, tried to do fractal burning themselves and their entire house went up on fire. It's not a part of this challenge. This is just a side note just to make sure that you understand that it is quite fucking dangerous. And they have been doing fractal burning. Their entire house went up on fire and both people unfortunately lost their lives. Corona, the Rona challenge. It's literally just people seeing... Uh, how bad corona really is then they go out of their way to get corona to see how bad it is i've had it twice it's pretty bad the ice cube challenge challenge where you put ice cubes places where they shouldn't be Uh, use your imagination not that bad but uh, not that good either and especially not on a i'm gonna call tiktok a children's site because it's predominantly teams and children that use it and i do not like uh, other people sexualizing themselves on apps that are not meant for adults just a little side note the libello challenge actually made me say what the fuck i don't know i swear all the time but i don't know why i was so afraid of doing it this time the idea is that there's two sides of it there's the first one which is like you would put it on it's a, a lipstick by the, no not a lipstick it's a uh, it's like vaseline what the fuck is it called it's a lip balm thank you jesus christ it's a lip balm right and then people would put the lip balm on and then they would like try to kiss people and see when it would come off right 
But then there's also a darker side of it and the other challenge, which put it on this list, you would buy a labello and then every time something bad or you felt sad, you would remove a little piece of it. And then you would continue removing a piece of it until it was over, like you didn't have any more labello in it. And then the teenager would then be saying their goodbyes and then supposedly, allegedly go out and kill themselves. There is no proof that this has ever happened. But it has been a trend that has gone around where people have at least believed that this is something that has happened. And the French government and Le Bello also came out and did a statement to parents and teens and uh, suicide help hotlines to try to combat this that is happening. Uh, but again, no proof that it actually has happened. But there's proof of being saying that they're doing it, right? So we don't know. The NyQuil chicken or the sleepy chicken is so god awfully fucking funny and i can't stop laughing at it i'm gonna put a picture up of it because that shit is so fucking funny it's literally just a boiling chicken in nyquil which makes it literally completely purple and it looks so fucking disgusting and it's so funny i do not the reason it's here is because that if you were to eat that chicken you would without a doubt a hundred percent die that chicken is so overloaded with sleeping agent that you would a hundred percent die there is no proof that anyone has actually done it. Well, has eaten it, but there's proof of people doing it. And then a little funny meme text like, gonna have the best sleep of my life. But there is no proof that anyone has actually ever done it. And I do think it's quite fucking funny because it looks so disgusting. But if you were to eat that, you would 100% die. But no proof, so I'm gonna make jokes about it. The milk crate challenge is where you stack uh, milk crates on top of each other and see how high you can go. Uh, unfortunately, milk crates are not the most stable, stable building material. And then people would go up the milk crate and then it would uh, crack under their weight and then they'll fall down. And milk crates also can be very sharp and there's been uh, multiple times where people have hurt themselves pretty, pretty badly. There is an unknown woman that has not died of it, but she has sustained a massive injury from going all the way up on the milk crates and then it cracking under her and then her falling in a really bad way. The blackout challenge is a challenge where you are restricting another person's breathing so they black out. I know multiple friends that did this as like a funny gag in their youths. I never did part of it. But I think this is just one of those things that every generation has some sort of blackout challenge. Now we just have the internet so people fill themselves while doing it. But obviously uh, restricting airflow to your brain is uh, really dangerous. Uh, and the blackout challenge... I remember when it popped up in my country many, many years ago when I was a teen and doing that, where there was deaths and there's also been reported numerous deaths of this in America because your body doesn't get oxygen. So if you don't get oxygen and your body doesn't work as it should be, or if you're blacked out for too long, uh, you need to immediately seek help. And therefore it's so far here because there, this is proven that there has been multiple deaths for this. The Benadryl challenge. The Benadryl challenge is an online challenge, obviously, because it's from TikTok. Well, it's also from just the general internet. Uh, and it's kind of like the nutmeg challenge, but Benadryl is a bit of a harder drug. Like you need to consume less Benadryl uh, to get the desired effect. But kind of like nutmeg, uh, Benadryl is also a paranoid, which makes you extremely paranoid. Uh, and it also is incredibly dangerous because it's a prescription drug. And if you don't know what Benadryl is, it's usually allergy medicine. Like if you have pollen allergy or if you have cat allergy or something like that, that's usually how you take it. But the challenge consists of uh, people filming themselves taking excessive amounts of uh, Benadryl and then afterwards uh, showing what happens. I unfortunately cannot do the Benadryl challenge as I owe the head man money. Now, in the Benadryl challenge, obviously I said before that it's extremely dangerous and I'll give you some examples. There's been numerous hospitalizations of people doing the Benadryl challenge and there was even three teens who got uh, administered to the Cook's Children Medical Facility after taking uh, 14 uh, Benadryls uh, themselves. They all survived, but they did get critical injuries. Someone that unfortunately wasn't that lucky was in 2023, Jacob Stevens, age 13, from Columbus, Ohio, that filmed himself, well, his friends filmed him while he consumed uh, Benadryl uh, in large quantities and got administered to the intensive care after he basically immediately started seizuring up. And after six days of intensive care, and on the mechanical ventilation, he unfortunately lost his life. The Penny Challenge. The Penny Challenge is probably the Darwin Awards, basically. 
the penny challenge is where you take uh, an outlet, right? You have an outlet and then you plug in a socket halfway through. So the electricity goes into it, but you know, obviously you have the metal prong sticking out and people then take a penny and hold it on the exposed prongs. This would often uh, just result in a person getting a slight uh, shock, electricity bolted through them. But uh, sometimes depending on where you live and different countries, especially in my country, that is 230 volt that goes through the circuits. So usually it's not that big of a problem. You just get a little shock, but it can definitely be deadly in some cases, especially if you also have some sort of heart condition or maybe underlying issues that uh, where you shouldn't get a lot of electricity through your body. Another side effect that it also can cause is that it can start fires because it's sparks. So if you have something flammable close by, that can also start a fire in your house or your home. But fortunately, there hasn't been any cases uh, as of yet that has showed any type of serious injury from this challenge. The Skull Breaker Challenge. The Skull Breaker Challenge is... Um, how do you even describe it? I'm not really sure if it can even be called a challenge because in my head, it's basically just aggravated assault. So what the challenge is, is that a person is standing next to you there's a person here and there's a person here and you stand in the middle and somebody else films you. Then they ask you in the middle to jump and when you jump, uh, they sweep the legs under you so you basically fall like back on your head, which is hence the name Skull Breaker Challenge because if they put enough force in it, you'll go from horizontal to vertical and you'll just hit the back of your skull. The stunt first appeared in 2021 in Spain, but it is still going as of 2023 and to 2024 in Brazil. It's still been an ongoing trend and it has unfortunately claimed the lives of two people, two young students. And in 2020 in New Jersey, two students even faced uh, criminal charges against them after they did this uh, prank or challenge towards a friend. Well, friend, uh, and it went horribly wrong. The burning pile challenge. The burning pile is a challenge that originally came from people lip syncing a song and the specific part that the lip sync goes like this. Burning pile, throw all my troubles at the world again. It goes all my troubles on a burning pile. And the majority would just lip sync themselves doing uh, this challenge, if you can even call it that. But the big thing is that the song, there's a transition. And when the transition happens, people would do a close up of themselves while they would have a lighter up to their face where they would show their makeup usually. But there's been a couple of cases where people don't really get the uh, flame to hair ratio correctly. And then they would literally just uh, put fire to themselves. Uh, no cases of it going horribly wrong, but uh, definitely a lot of cases of uh, smelling like burnt hair. The Foreigner Challenge is also from a song and the song is Foreigner by Pop Smoke. And the challenge, how the f*** do I even say this? The challenge is of people showing explicit photos and videos of themselves when they were children. And they say that they do this to raise awareness of predatory behavior and... Um, but what it actually does is that it's just, um, it's, it's just showing CP to a lot of people. Yeah, that's it. The Tide Pod Challenge. I don't even feel like I have to really talk about this one. The Tide Pod Challenge was a huge challenge that has been spanning many, many years. And Tide Pod, if you do not know what a Tide Pod is, it is a laundry detergent. And the reason why it became a challenge was uh, because the laundry detergent or the washing detergent basically looks like a fun little candy. So it would be children, uh, predominantly children and teens showing themselves uh, eating this Tide Pod, which you shouldn't do because a Tide Pod is a lot of uh, toxins. It's it's bleach. It's it, it's literally bleach. It was even named a national risk in America in 2012 and 2013. There were reports of over 7,000 cases in America of children and teens eating these Tide Pods and having to go to the ER or call poison control. The Tide Pod Challenge has also directly resulted in six deaths in 2017. Because of this, P&G changed their Tide Pod design to a more opaque design and introduced warning labels. They also added a bitter taste to the chemical, so even if a child were to eat it, even if it's just for a challenge, then they it would be certainly almost impossible for them to actually eat the thing because it would taste so bad. 
But after that, they even did that. People would then do a challenge where they would try to eat the Thai pot, even with the bitter taste, and then they would feel themselves uh, gaggle and gurgle uh, because it would taste so bad that they would start throwing up. Some teens even tried to cook the Thai pot before they uh, tried to eat it. The timer challenge. This is kind of in the mysterious section. It's not really certain if it's real or not, but uh, this is how it goes, at least. The timer challenge is a person sets a 24-hour timer on their phone or on their tablet or whatever. And after those 24 hours have gone by, if nobody has texted them or sent them a message or called them or is in any need of them, then supposedly, allegedly, they would then... Um, I'm not really sure. There's no cases of this actually being true and any cases of this actually happening. But either way, it's still a really fucked up scenario. The magnet challenge. The magnet challenge might sound pretty risk free, uh, if you can say it like that, but it really is not. The magnet challenge involves a person taking two magnets and putting them on either side of the tongue. So you would put one on the top and one on the bottom. And that would uh, result in this like piercing looked like you got your tongue pierced but magnets are a huge choking hazard and unfortunately uh, people have choked on them nobody has died of it supposedly allegedly but they're extremely toxic if you do swallow a magnet here are two cases where it went wrong ellis trip 11 years old had to go through a six hour surgery to remove small parts of his bowel five inches to be exact uh, to get the magnet out and nine-year-old Jack Mason had to have removed small parts of his intestines, small parts of his bowel, and his appendix had to be removed after participating in this challenge. They both did end up surviving, which is very, very lucky, but it is extremely dangerous. Okay, the blue whale challenge. I cannot go too deep into the blue whale because there is unironically just way too much information about the blue whale challenge for me to even conceivably uh, go through in one video. Well, I would be able to do it in one video if I had an entire video about it, which is very possible that I actually might do. But the Blue Way Challenge is, in its short form, an online phenomenon that has been claimed to exist in uh, multiple different countries. The game consists of uh, a person doing a series of different challenges, which is uh, isolating them more and getting them more away from friends and families. This would predominantly be aimed at children and teens, usually women also, or girls, I should say, uh, which starts a 50-period timer from the first challenge to the last challenge. And the first challenge might be something pretty innocuous, like uh, don't listen to your favorite song or listen to this sad song. And the last challenge would always be the same. That challenge being film yourself during the challenge, they would also be introduced multiple different challenges of self-harm and isolation. The Blue Whale uh, first gained notoriety in Russia in 2016 and was first covered in the Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta and has linked an extreme number of children and teens to this game. The game has also been banned in multiple different countries, but it is extremely difficult to get the perpetrators down and locate them. But I will most likely do a video about this because this there's straight up just too much information. So in short format, it's an online game where men who are older and also probably some women also uh, make up this game, which they would post on forums and on other social media to get young, maybe unhappy children and teens to participate in which were a way for them to manipulate them into, at the end, film themselves. And multiple people has also been arrested for being a part of this game. The Hot Water Challenge. The Hot Water Challenge is a challenge which Kids was inspired to do on YouTube, TikTok, and what have you. It involves pouring boiling hot water on an unsuspecting friend. And in one fatal instance, forcing a friend to drink boiling hot water directly through a straw. Gemonisha Merritt of the Bronx was badly burned when friends poured boiling hot water over him. And 10-year-old Weasley Smith of North Carolina suffered severe burns after him and his stepbrother tried to do the challenge. And 8-year-old Kiari Pope of Florida unfortunately lost her life after getting dared uh, into drinking boiling hot water through a straw. 
Pope burned her mouth and throat and received a tracheotomy. That's the one where you um, you cut up a little hole here so you can get air from directly from your lungs so you don't have to use your, your mouth. Suffered during respiratory problems. The night she died, she told her family that she could not breathe and fell unconscious shortly after. The dangerous TikTok school shooting trend. The trend is uh, people calling in their school uh, in America saying that they're going to do a school shooting or someone else is going to do a school shooting and then try to vandalize it and uh, try to make it seem like there is going to be a massacre very, very soon. Yeah, this is tier five. The Holocaust challenge. If you don't know what the Holocaust is, the Holocaust was a concentration camp during Second World War where the Nazis would imprison people that they did not seem pure, uh, which would usually be Jews and other people of other races or who they just didn't really like, and they would torture them and kill them. The Holocaust challenge is where teens dress up like the dead people of the Holocaust. So they would have like sad makeup on and have like 1950 clothes on and then lip sync to music and talk about how sad they were and all the torture they endured during this uh, Holocaust. Other versions show the representation of the genocide of the Jewish population acting out what happened to them, sometimes using uh, pictures of the Holocaust, uh, Auschwitz, one of the centers, as a backdrop. Some creators did the yellow star of David, the ones that Jews were forced to wear during the Second World War, and some would even dressed up in striped shirts that they were in the concentration camps. Some people have claimed, like a 17-year-old girl from New Jersey, that the reason why they've done this uh, Holocaust channel is to raise awareness. And I've said that in multiple different videos, but I do not think you need to fucking raise awareness about one of the worst genocides in the entire world. People probably know. And some other people say it's to educate people. So I think it's really good that you can do your little TikTok dance while uh, acting like you're a tortured Holocaust victim. The 17-year-old even went on to newspaper and said that she felt it was very important to share this story uh, where she would fake a dead person from the Holocaust genocide. The person that she portrayed was a person who was getting deported with their family to Auschwitz where they all were murdered in the gas chambers. She went on to say that she never intended it to be offensive. She felt it was uh, important to educate people. While others view it as a trauma and say that it's really offensive for people and family members and the Jewish population. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm gonna have to agree on that one. That is incredibly fucking offensive that some random ass 17 year old American girl is just pretending to be a, a, a person getting killed in the Holocaust to raise fucking awareness. I don't know, go read a book or tell people to read about history, bruh. Fucking. And other people would even go so far to show uh, videos of uh, how they got killed in the Holocaust and what happened to them and do representation of what killed them in the fucking Holocaust. And bro, I'm getting fucking heated up about this because that is so fucking offensive. Like, that's actually fucking crazy. The autism challenge. The autism challenge is um, people uh, faking having autism in social uh, environments uh, to raise awareness again. So it's basically just uh, people trying to show themselves uh, completing various tasks, faking having autism. Like, this is how it is for a normal person and this is how it is for a person with autism uh, to show how life is different from people with autism, which is also just highly fucking offensive because maybe it should be people who live with autism that should try to raise awareness. It kind of reminds me of the girl that faked having Tourette's to show people how life was with Tourette's when she didn't even have fucking Tourette's, but she just used it as a marketing scheme and a brain scheme. Like, bro, what the... F what can I even say? These, uh, I'm very sorry, but here at the end, I'm uh, quite annoyed about these because a lot of these are really fucked up. Now we're getting to the last ones, and these are extremely grim. I have to preface this enough. If you are squeamish or if you don't like to hear about death and don't like to hear about true crime and stuff like that, I will have to tell you to maybe you should skip this one because these last ones are incredibly grim. The Angel of Death Challenge. As the name uh, might lead you to believe, it is also very true. The Angel of Death Challenge originated from Indonesia, which is a challenge where 
they have to prove if the angel of death is going to take them or if they're going to get saved. Now, how would you go about to do that? Well, the most common way to show the angel of death challenge is a person filming one to more individuals running into the streets of passing cars and then standing directly in front of a car going towards them, standing still and seeing if the car will break, if they will be saved or if the car won't make it in time and will then severely injure them or kill them. The participant would run or jump in front of a moving vehicle and the challenge is complete if the car stops before it hits the participant. The challenge has impacted a lot of teens and has already been proven to be fatal. Two teenagers in Indonesia lost their lives to this gruesome challenge and they unfortunately suffered skull injuries which proved to be fatal. And to make matters even worse, not only was it those two, but there was 14 other teenagers with them where most of them got severely injured in this incident. And here is the very last one, the George Floyd challenge. George Floyd died on May the 25th after a Minneapolis police officer knelt on his neck for multiple minutes while taking him into custody for allegedly trying to pass a fake $20 bill. During the eight long minutes where he suffered, you could hear George Floyd multiple times say that he couldn't breathe. And since then, four other officers involved in the incident has been charged in the connection of the incident. In response to this awful incident, people started taking videos and uh, pictures of themselves kneeling on their friend's neck saying it was a part of the George Floyd challenge. And participating in this trend has led to uh, three individuals in the UK being arrested. And two individuals aged 18 and 19 were arrested in Northern England by police after their George Floyd challenge circulated the internet. And they were arrested on the cases of causing anxiety and distress. And this challenge is getting perceived and charged as a hate crime. So the challenge is literally just... Um, doing the same the police officer did to George Floyd. Here at the end, I would like to thank you for watching these videos. I know that they got very, very dark at the end, but that is also a little bit kind of like the whole point of an iceberg. They just start peaceful and you end in a way that is uh, very horrific. Yeah, I don't have that much more to say, actually. I hope that you enjoyed this video and it was educational and informational for some of you. And I also hope that uh, during the less horrible parts of this mold series that you also got some uh, humor in and you thought it was a little bit funny and interesting. Uh, on that, I don't have that much more else to say other than thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe because it really truly does help out a lot. And I do see all of your guys' comments. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you have a great one and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. I know a lot of these are very gruesome, these challenges, and I don't try to make fun of them or I don't try to make fun of the people involved uh, and I don't even try to raise awareness or anything. I just think it's incredibly interesting and I hope you get some sort of educational purpose out of this or at least you also find this just as morbidly interesting as I do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it.